Hey, what's up you guys? This is Gabby and what are we going to talk about today? In today's video, we are going to talk about getting a call back from the recruiter after you apply for a job or an internship. So if you follow the tips that I mentioned in this video, you have a much higher chance of getting that call back and hopefully moving to the next stage, which is getting that in-person interview. I know right now with everything happening, a lot of people's current job positions are changing. Unfortunately, people are losing their jobs. And once all of this wraps up, people are going to have to go through the whole job search process again. So hopefully this is helpful to those individuals. And also with the summer months coming, we have social work students who are looking for internships. So this can help you guys as well. So once you find that job or internship that you really, really like, you have to go through the process of filling out the application, sending your resume, all that. Then you have to go through the soul crushing moments and time where you have to wait for that callback, right? Usually the way it works is before they invite you in for a sit down interview, they're going to give you a call and talk to you, learn more about you and to really screen you to make sure you're not crazy and that you have at least the baseline requirements for that job or internship. So it's a very nerve wracking process after you put in all of your application documents and submit them to have to wait for that callback. So in this video, I want to give you some tips and tricks that you can take to actually get that callback and that you are ready to go once the hiring manager or recruiter gives you that call. So tip number one, when you are in the process of applying for a job, we wanna make sure that you have a pristine presence on the internet and that if someone Googles your name, they won't be frightened and they won't be completely turned off. So for those out there who are still in school and you're looking for an internship, I specifically want you to listen up because you may not really be familiar with the process and how companies view your social media presence and how much that can really impact whether or not you get that call back. Because if they go to your social media or they find you on Facebook and they're seeing that you have all of these pictures of you at the club, partying, drinking alcohol, you're cussing in your statuses, all of that, like it really is a turn off and it doesn't make a good first impression. So even before you submit your application materials, I want you to make sure that you either private your Facebook or your Instagram page and that you Google yourself. Um, literally go to Google, put your name in the search engine and see what pops up and put yourself in the position of the hiring manager or that employer that you're interested in working for. What will they see? How would they feel about the things that they're seeing? Even if it's borderline, I say delete it, hide it, and get it off the face of the internet because you just don't want, you just don't know how much of a stickler this specific person is. So you don't want to accidentally offend someone. Um, so even if it's something that is a little bit questionable, I say hide it, delete it, do whatever you have to do so that when you search in your name, that does not pop up. And along the same line, so I've actually been in the position where I was hiring someone, interviewing someone. I used to work in admissions in the past. So one of the first things I'm gonna do in that position is I'm gonna go to Google and I'm gonna look for your professional LinkedIn profile. And when I go to your LinkedIn, I expect to see a headshot because that's gonna help me to get to know who you are better and it's gonna make your page more personable. So even if it's not a professional headshot from a world renowned photographer, like you don't need all of that. All you need is a clear, clean picture with no crazy background noise in it that shows who you are as an individual in a good light. So really what you need to care about is that it is neat, it's good lighting and that you yourself are presentable in that picture. It doesn't have to be anything amazing, but I see so many people who do not have a picture on their LinkedIn and you just need a picture, you guys. It's going to help that recruiter or hiring manager to connect with you more and feel that they know you even before they talk to you. Also, in order to fully optimize your LinkedIn, you need to create a summary section under all of your job descriptions. 
this is another thing that I see when I go to people's LinkedIn pages. They have the job title that they work and you know the position that they're currently in, but they don't really give any detail about the type of work that they are doing in that position. What are their everyday tasks? What are the goals they're trying to reach? What are the populations they're working with? I wanna know more about this as a hiring manager. So it helps me to know that you are currently a project manager or an intern at this company or that company but what i really want to know is what your job duties are and what you're actually accomplishing in this role that is honestly more important to me than what your title is so please fill out those sections underneath your title to give a little bit more of a description around what you're actually doing and you can mimic what you put on your resume for this as well so you can literally if you need to copy and paste verbatim just do that because any information there is better than none. Um, and also at the top, you have the opportunity to create a summary of who you are, um, you know, what you're currently doing now and where you're hoping to go in your professional career. I recommend you to take advantage of that summary section at the very top as well. And there's so few people who have a summary section. So if you do that, you really can shine above the rest. And in LinkedIn really is one of the first places that hiring managers are gonna go to learn more about you. So if you have a clean LinkedIn page and your competition has a LinkedIn page with no picture, no summary, no descriptions under their job titles, they're automatically gonna be more drawn to you and feel that they know you better and you're gonna be more likely to get that call back. Okay, so another way you can optimize your LinkedIn during the job search period. This is a great time for you to ensure that everyone in your network is also on your LinkedIn page if they have a LinkedIn. So people that you currently work with, people that you've worked with in the past, people that you've met at different events, um, people that you've networked at at conferences. If you haven't already added them on your LinkedIn, do it now before you start that job search. I just wanna stress how important it is to actually search people's name into LinkedIn and to send them a request so that they are a part of your LinkedIn network. Why that is? Because it's really going to come in handy as you start the job search. So one trick that I have been doing over the past few years as I apply for different positions, whether it be jobs or you know different volunteer or board positions, is that I try to find out who the hiring manager is and you know I learn their name and I go to LinkedIn I type their name in and I try to see what connections we have in common what friends do we share what professional connections do we both have and once I figure that out if it's someone that we share that I have a close relationship with or even a working relationship with I will reach out to them and ask them, hey, you know, I see that we have a shared connection with so-and-so. How do you guys know each other? I'm currently interested in potentially working in the same company that she works in. Um, could you answer some questions for me? Or maybe if you have a really good relationship with that individual, they could put in a good word for you. You just never know. So I say it doesn't hurt to ask. Of course, you want to be careful about who you ask because if it's someone that you currently work with and you're reaching out and you're like, hey, I see we share this person in common and I'm looking for a job working where she works. Could you help me out? That could be kind of weird. Ideally, it's better if it's someone from a different group completely as you know the group of employees that you currently work with. So just be cautious there. But I think it's such a powerful tool because we all know that you know there's a famous phrase that says it's not what you know, it's who you know. I don't think that's totally correct, but I do think there is some truth to it. Often when you have the right connections and you know the right people, it can get your foot in the door with a job easier than someone who doesn't have those connections. And these days it's so much easier to fill out a job application because it's all online, right? All you have to do is just go online and put this information in and send it in. You don't have to send a job application and a resume through the mail anymore. You don't have to walk into the actual establishment and hand your application materials. So this means that more people all around the world are applying for jobs. So the competition is definitely more steep. So if you can get a shared connection to help you out there, that's gonna help you to stand out against the competition. Okay. And after you submit your application materials, I can't stress enough how important it is to always answer your phone. Because most likely you're gonna get a call from your hiring manager or 
recruiter without any type of scheduling or without you knowing you know they're gonna just give you a call at a random time between nine and five that works for them and they're gonna expect you to answer and be prepared to talk to them and to go through different screening questions with them um, my current job I'm I've only been here for about nine months but I remember that process and what that was like I was actually at the grocery store when I got a call and I had to run to my car and take the call with the hiring manager and basically do an initial interview, right? You have to just be ready to seize the opportunity and you really don't want them to call you several times and not get an answer because remember, they have this list of applicants and if you're one of the only applicants who's not answering, they're gonna easily forget about you. They're gonna end up falling in love with another applicant and you haven't even had the chance to compete because you're not even answering your phone. So you don't want to be the last person on the hiring manager's mind. So always have your phone on you after you start submitting application materials to various jobs. And often we are applying to multiple jobs at once. So when you're doing that, you have to make sure you're clear on you know what different jobs you're applying for and the job descriptions and the duties for each job keep that clear in your mind so even if you have to type out a short one pager for every job that you have applied for so that if you do get a call from a hiring manager you can pull that paper out and just refresh yourself on the job description so when you're answering their questions you can make sure that it's aligned with the job description do it because you don't want to be on the phone talking to a hiring manager and you're like, oh wait, well, you know, what is this job? Like, who are you guys again? Just think about it from the hiring manager's perspective. If they see that you're just applying to a bunch of jobs and you're not really invested in this specific job, they're probably gonna wanna find someone who is a bit more in love with their company and someone who's more excited to work at their company. So even if you are applying to multiple jobs, it is your goal to make the hiring manager think that they're the only one. So whatever you have to do to keep all the information straight around the different jobs and internships that you're applying for, do that. So if you have to make a one pager, if you have to do an Excel spreadsheet, whatever you have to do, and once again, answer your phone and for that initial screening conversation via phone they're going to ask you some pretty general questions they're, they're going to want to know who you are why you're interested in the company they want you to tell them about your experience so just basic level stuff to help them better understand who you are and to see if they want to actually invite you in for an interview so if you could go to google and look up you know traditional screening interview questions um, get an idea of what those are come up with some answers for yourself around what how you can respond and you know just be ready to go once you get that phone call I think if you take this advice you're already gonna be steps ahead of the competition if that call comes you want to make a good impression and you want to move to the next stage which is the actual in-person interview okay so my last piece of advice I have not even been counting down you guys but this is number six okay um my last piece of advice is to always do a cover letter i know when you're job searching and when an application is online they may say that a cover letter is optional right we know that the resume is always mandatory they need a resume but the cover letter may be optional however you still want to do the cover letter them saying the cover letter is optional is just a, an easy way for them to automatically screen a bunch of people out because if you can't even take an extra 30 minutes or so to create a cover letter are you really interested in this job and why should i take the time to even interview you when you couldn't take the time to do a cover letter that's really what I would think if I was on the opposite side. And your cover letter really needs to just be a one pager. You know, you wanna have the introduction paragraph, the body and the conclusion. The body could probably be about two paragraphs long. So, so you're looking at one page, about three to four paragraphs. And, and in your cover letter, you shouldn't rehash what you said on your resume. This is the opportunity for you to bring up different accomplishments that you didn't have the room to put on your resume and to let them know that you understand what this role is that you're applying for and, and to make the connections between this role and your experience and why you think you are the best fit for this role. And make sure that you sound very enthusiastic in your cover letter, make it personal, um, make it something that is inspiring. You want to inspire 
the hiring manager to reach out to you and you want them to think, wow, you know, this person is passionate about the job. This person has a lot of experience. I feel I know this person better. I'm going to reach out. So, you know, that's really what the cover letter is for. It's that initial introduction and it gives you that time to really shine and let them know who you are. So why wouldn't you want to take the opportunity to do just that? I hope this video and this content is good for you guys and please leave in the comment section below if you have any other video recommendations or if you guys ever have any questions about anything I mentioned in the video or any services that I offer on my website, please do not hesitate to ask. And on that note, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.